Well, it's the end of September, and kids and teenagers have already gone back to school. So to celebrate, let's talk about a teacher who is clearly too passionate about his work and how he feels towards his students. This story was pretty interesting, despite that I knew where it was going to go. I mean, I understand the stress of your students not succeeding in class, but I don't think that murdering many of them with a freaking hammer is gonna fix things. I guess this is what happens when you do a half-assed job in class. Your teacher will finally snap due to stress and do God knows what with his hammer. If this story taught me anything, it's that I'm really, really happy to be out of high school. Now if you excuse me, it's time for me to go to college to fail out of class. Mr. Fisher was always a hothead one. In a good way, of course. He was one of those teachers that could playfully talk shit to all the stupid teenagers in the class, getting a good laugh out of all of us. And he was also one of those teachers that were fucking excellent at the job. Fisher's scholastic passion was American literature. And boy, he knew American literature. I can't even count the number of times he would rant about J.D. Salinger or Ernest Hemingway relentlessly and then just stop talking and so now because he would ponder the greatness of their work in a silent bubble. We would just watch him sulk in his episode of awkward silence in fury admiration for his idols. Don't get me wrong, unlike most of the students in the school that didn't give a flying fuck about our educational progress, he cared excessively. He would go out on his own way to try and legitimately connect with us individually just so we could crack the codes of our developing minds and learn the secrets to how he can get us to pay attention in his class. He was a great teacher, and not to be bold, but I was a great student. I was his favorite student. Whenever he would ask the class for an answer, and he never saw any hands go up, he would just pull me out in the hot seat. With no problem at all, I would answer him every time. There were even times when he would walk up to my desk, put his hand on my shoulder, and commemorate me. Why in the middle of the damn class session? Now at the time, it was a bit much, yes, but I wasn't just going to deny his request for a correct answer. The only thing that I was ever concerned with in his class was that he would make everything super hard. We would have to study things that we would never even got close to becoming attached to in his class. The tests were impossible, his homework assignments were too long to the brink of impossibility, and his grading system was complete bullshit. His fucking grading system. He would grade all assignments, all quizzes, all tests on an entire class average. So whenever there was a majority of below 50 scores, that's what the entire class as a unit would get. He believed this tactic was brutally fair. He claimed that if we lacked the ability to work with each other as a class, and to learn as a class as a whole, then we should all burn for each other's inability to learn. He wanted all of us to work together, but there was always a barrier between all the drama and all of the awkward teenage communicational blocks that would prevent each and every one of us from clicking with each other. He had six high school classes in the school year. We were his least successful one, and he was never afraid to announce that. He was always proud to feel like a waste of his time, and ours. Okay, now I feel like I'm just rambling. The main points of the story are his grading system, and the day Fisher went batshit crazy in class. It was two weeks before the end of the school year. We were all anticipating the changes of the weather in the final day. We were so excited that we even started communicating with each other. All classmates were just clicking. Summer fever was taking the entire student population by storm, and we were loving it. Mr. Fisher wasn't. This was the day we were supposed to get back our tests on Catcher in the Rye back. And as a class average, we were expecting to flunk this. We all loved the novel. It was one of those novels where most of the classmates even told Flesher that they could connect to the main protagonist. The story itself was well written and beautifully put together, but that didn't mean Flesher would make the test even remotely easy. As a class average, failed. I noticed the pain in Flesher's face as he was handing all of us our papers back. I knew some volcanic eruption of painful lecturing was coming. I was wrong. I was totally and completely false. Fisher walked up to the door and locked it. I noticed his action along with several other puzzled classmates. He then walked to his desk, pulled out a hammer from a cabinet, 
and whacked it on the desk. All of you stay after class. My face got warm, and my heart dropped to my fucking groin. I looked at the clock from the corner of my eye, and noticed that there were 40 minutes in class left. He walked down each student's row, flicked a student's ear, and announced the class average grade letter. E. 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 He did this until he approached me. He messed up my hair, and softly said, A. I started swaying, my teeth were clenched with fear, and my hands were shaking underneath my ass. I sat on my hand as a nervous habit. My desk is right in front of his, so right from my desk, he jumped on his and stood up on it. He then shut the blinds on the window next to his desk and flicked the light switch. The room was a shade of dark blue now, only illuminated by his computer screen and the weak ray of sunlight piercing the blind on the window. 36 minutes until lunch, one more week until final exams, two more weeks until summer, he said. We were all frozen. He had us in the palm of his hand. Let's see what you all know. Final exams start now. He bellowed now and made it echo and radiate throughout the room. He grabbed the handle of his hammer and walked away from his desk, the blunt sigh of it scraping against his wooden desk. My fellow classmate Justin from across the room didn't take this body language with peace. He should have just stayed still. He should have just sat there. He should have stayed still. Instead, he spotted the hammer in his hands and slowly began to rise out of his desk while looking Fisher right in the fucking eyes. Justin, take your seat. Mr. Fisher, I don't know if I want to do that. He said something along the lines of that, but I don't remember. But whatever he said, Fisher would not let that fly past him. He slowly began to approach him. He taunted him by lightly tapping a hammer across his chalkboard. He did this for several moments until he stopped at the edge of the board. He then drove the hammer into its black surface. Justin literally fucking collapsed into his seat and his hands were shaking all over the place. Mr. Fisher then ran to his desk, whacked the hammer next to his shaking hands. Justin placed his hands on his lap and looked down at the floor. All of the students started to lose their shit. They all started to get out of the desks and walk towards the door. But Fisher had one thing that could keep us all in our desks. The hammer. And he used it on Justin. This is where things got out of hand. He swung the hammer full force at Justin's head. The force was so powerful that it made Justin fly into the bookshelf on his left. He hit the floor hard afterwards. And I remember seeing his body quiver and shake from the pain. This is where the students stopped what they were doing and just stayed quiet. Now, in regards to all the loud banging from the hammer, you might be wondering why no one heard. Well, let's see. His classroom was behind the gymnasium, and the gymnasium was practically near the end of the school building, and physical education was not in session, therefore making the rest of the school faculty completely oblivious to the fact that Fisher was rampant in his classroom with a hammer. He started smacking the hammer on Justin's desk like a gavel, and then he gestured all of the students to get back in the desks. Despite all of the trauma getting pushed into these kids' brains, they still remain obedient. Despite all of the hysterical students with tears streaming down their faces, they finally gave Fisher what he always wanted. Attention, obedience, organization. Nancy, start the semester. What did we read? Nancy's posture shot up into defense and fear. Uh, 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 uh. He started raising his voice and stretching out his words to fuck over her head. Nancy, pay attention! What did we read at the start of the semester? His head would tilt side by side with each syllable. He was toying with her completely. And then his face got red. The veins in his neck started bulging. The lack of verbal communication from Nancy may have snapped into another episode of violent eruption. He growled, grabbed Nancy by her hair, and threw her at the chalkboard. She kept trying to crawl away from the front of the room, but he kept kicking her back on the wall. She was bawling her fucking eyes out. That's when he pointed at me. He picked her up and put her in a headlock. She was struggling, but it was pointless. He had her neck in one arm, 
and the other arm was extended towards me. McGree, what do we read at the start of the semester, eh? I was stuttering. I was turning into a broken record. I just couldn't give him an answer. I was panicking and my mind was at a blank. He released her neck, grabbed her by the hair again, and started slamming her face into the board. McCray, what do we read at the start of the fucking semester? He wanted me to forget the answer. He wanted to toy with me. Save her, McCray. You can do it. That's when the light bulb shot out of my brain. Light bulb! I sprang into action. Death of a Pig by E.B. White. What was that? Death of a Pig by E.B. White. Fisher began to loosen his grip, and the expression on his face was completely blank. Absolutely empty. I had him right where I wanted him. And then, he let out a deep sigh, until an evil smirk stretched across his face. And that's when he opened his mouth slowly and said, The Minstrel's Black Veal by Nathan O. Hawthorne. <laughs> My face slowly melted into an emotion of anguish and pain. Fisher pulled her face into the chalkboard with one hand, and then swung the hammer at the back of her skull with the other. She fell to the floor instantly. You could hear the sound of, you could hear the sound of the skull exploding. Some kids started vomiting. It was either Lucas or Nicholas. I know that I may seem like I'm showing no emotion to this situation, but at the time, I was terrified of Fisher. I'm still remotely suffering from the guilt of laying Nancy down. I couldn't live with myself for the longest time after that. I looked at the clock and noticed that there's 24 minutes left in class. He spent a good 20 minutes since the start of his episode antagonizing Justin and Nancy, getting us to shut the fuck up with a whack of the hammer every now and then. After he smashed Nancy's head in, he just stared at the aftermath. He looked at Justin, and then Nancy, and then he started hyperventilating. He dropped the hammer and collapsed into his office chair. This is when tears started to come to my eyes. Really, they did. This is when everyone realized his pain, his anger. I shouldn't have done this, but I did. I got out of my desk, walked up to Fisher, and then kneeled down. He looked up at me from the palm of his hands. Then he started laughing. Tears of a red, smiling face. He raised his voice and greeted. McGree, how you doing? Mr. Fisher, we can help you. He chuckled at my response. You help me? Oh, McGree, your brilliant mind has been helping me all goddamn school year, but these delinquents in front of me can't do shit for me. Mr. Fisher, listen- Shut the fuck up, McGree. He shoved me into his office chair, and then he picked up his hammer. Well, class. 18 minutes left, and look at what we have accomplished. He wiped his hand on the chalkboard until his hand was red and pink with a collaboration of blood and brain matter. He then walked out to some kid in the back, I think his name was Eric, and he grabbed him by his hair, pulled his head back, and then smeared the substance on his face. Fisher wasn't angry. This was the most calm I've seen him ever. That's a class average. You are all fucking failures, except for McGrady here. Learn from him, because he won't be dying today, although some more of you will. He laughed, stopped walking, and then looked to his right. How you doing, Beaker? Abruptly, swiftly, and carelessly, he swung the hammer at the back of his skull. The students were going insane, literally. Fisher's own sanity was radiating throughout the room and entering the mind of his students. Kids were crying, shaking, and frozen in absolute shock. But what concerned me is not that a single one of them tried to leave. I didn't look at a spree of hammer swings, but I could hear it. I just sat there until five minutes remained in class. Throughout a period of 13 minutes, there were six whacks. I didn't want to know. All I know is that Justin and Nancy didn't make it. Two people died, and I killed one of them. And yes, I absolutely blame myself for Nancy's fate to this very day. The bell rang, but all students remained in their seats, staring at Fisher. And then suddenly, with a perverse smile, 
He says, Class dismiss. Some students ran and screamed. Some students just walked out slowly without complaint. I was one of those people, and I was the last student out. Straying away from my class, Fisher shouts out to me, McRae! A thousand needles shoot up my spine, and then I turn around to listen to Fisher's announcement. What I said about you not dying today. I remain still, paralyzed. Don't forget about that. He started laughing like a madman. I could hear his laugh following me as I walked down the hall. I could hear his laugh as I took my shortcut through the gymnasium. And I could hear his laugh over the incoming police sirens. 